What is good, everybody? Nathan Lombardo here with Lambo Me, and just across the screen from me is Jeff Criswell, Oakland Athletics right-handed pitching prospect. He went to the University of Michigan, absolutely balled out there. And why not start off this interview right there, Jeff? Absolutely sensational 2019 season for you know the Michigan Wolverines baseball team as a whole. Talk to me a little bit about that season. You know, in particular, obviously dominated at the University of Michigan, you know, during your time there, but about that 2019, you know, team in particular, what made that 2019 team so, you know, special? Yeah, you know, that team, um, you know, it was, it was definitely a special one to be on, like you said. Uh, I think one thing that really kind of brought us together, we had a lot of Michigan guys. Okay. Um, so, you know, Coach Package has, you know, an incredible recruiting philosophy and he gets guys from all over the country, you know, from California to New York to, you know, the Midwest guys. Um, but, you know, I think we really had a strong core group of Michigan guys there. Um, myself, Tommy Henry, uh, Carl Kaufman, you know, going right. to Jordan Wogu, Jordan Brewer, you know, a lot of, a lot of really cool, like homegrown guys. Um, and I think, you know, just kind of playing for, you know, the, the name across the chest, right? Playing for Michigan, playing for that team that you grew up watching. Um, you know, I think that was just really, really, I've been really special in that 2019 team uh, and something that we all just kind of banded together and really wanted to put, you know, a Northern school on the map. So, right. um, you know, I could talk about that team for hours, you know, just filled with a bunch of characters and a bunch of really, really good dudes. And, um, you know, we certainly made the most of that season. So, um, you know, just, just a really special group to be a part of. And, and, you know, like I said, we all just kind of came together and, and all banded for, you know, those, those letters across our chest. Yeah, absolutely. And how big of an impact do you think, you know, being, you know, growing up in Michigan, how big of an impact did that have on you actually committing and going to Michigan? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a big impact. I, I was a huge Michigan football fan growing up. Uh, so that was, you know, one of kind of the first college football games I ever saw. Um, and my dad took me and I saw Sam McGuffey hurdle a guy. I don't remember that, but um, you know, kind of at that moment, you know, just growing up, going to those football games and kind of seeing the campus, um, you know, I loved Michigan growing up and, and it was obviously a dream to play for Coach Package and, and play for University of Michigan. So for me, um, like you said, you know, as a Michigan guy, when I got the opportunity to go there, you know, it was kind of a no doubter for me. Um, and like I said, yeah, something I, I dreamed of for a long time. Mm -hmm. And Michigan is obviously a very big football school. Was that something that kind of, you know, you and the rest of the Michigan baseball team kind of vented to and went to kind of, you know, to get and build even more of the outside bond outside of baseball? Was that was that something you guys kind of, you know, went to a lot every every Saturday, went to a Michigan Michigan game? What was that like? Yeah, and not just football, um, you know, basketball, football. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was a really big thing in the Michigan community and the Michigan athletic community was just to, you know, support your other your other student athletes. So. Um, you know, whether it's going to a volleyball game, a, a basketball game, a football game, lacrosse, you know, just, just trying to go to any any game, um, you know, to support your friends, support fellow student athletes. It's definitely a, you know, a really cool way to kind of bring the, the athletic community together um, and something really special to be a part of because, you know, when we're out there playing, you see, um, you know, a lot of athletes show up and watch us and, you know, you kind of try to return the favor and, and get as many as in the stands as you can. Mm -hmm. And what was that relationship like between sports? You mentioned you guys obviously support each other a lot. What can you say to the younger guys? Maybe high schoolers were obviously seeing it even sooner, maybe even eighth graders getting recruited by Michigan. What is so special about being a Michigan Wolverine? And, you know, talk to, talk a little bit about the relationships, you know, you gain in Michigan. Yeah, I mean, outside of baseball, um, you know, because I think a lot of student athletes can kind of share similar experiences on their own teams. But that was one thing that I just thought was really, really prevalent in the in the athletic community was how well the teams bonded between each other. Um, you know, we, we hung out with all sorts of teams. Obviously, you know, it got a little bit tough there in my junior year with COVID. But pre-COVID, right. um, you know, you, you hang out with all sorts of different student athletes, all different teams. Um, and it really is one big athletic community. You know, you, you, you meet people from all different walks of life, all different places, different states. Um, and you know, you all got one thing in common, right? You're a Michigan Wolverine. So right. um, I think it's an incredibly cool thing to be a part of, um, you know, and it, and it extends beyond the athlete community too. You know, the, the student base at Michigan is just a very, very fun, um, you know, easy going, you know, you, meet, you just meet so many different people. And, and that's kind of one of the cool things about going to college, you know, and 
a lot of guys get the opportunity to play professionally out of high school and I would never tell somebody not to take that route but um, that's definitely one of the advantages of college is you just kind of get to grow your, your network of friends and um, you get to meet so many new people so that was that was definitely a cool thing and something I'm really grateful uh, to be able to be a part of. Yeah I think this conversation is a perfect segue into my next question we're talking about having a tight-knit pump tight-knit bond uh, you mentioned Tommy Henry and Carl Kaufman a little bit earlier as you're starting three that was you and then you know Tommy and Carl as well what was that bond like between you three guys and how important do you think that was to your guys' success because you know having confidence in one another is huge when you know going deep into the college world series if you if you want to win a college world series you have to have a tight bond and not just on the diamond you have to have a good relationship off the field as well so how important do you would you say you know that bond between you three you know was for your guys success yeah i mean it was incredibly important um you know those guys i they call them i call them my older brothers uh you know the brothers i never had um, <laughs> you know, they're they're the coolest dudes and uh, you know they got to go in the draft year before me i got to kind of watch their progression um you know they helped me through things you know throughout my entire career at michigan um but it was really just a shared mentality between the three of us right you know in 2019 it was kind of um you know, it was an up and down season for, for the entirety of the year, uh, you know, from start to finish. Um, but the one thing that we all kind of knew was, hey, if, if one guy didn't go out there on a Friday or a Saturday or a Sunday and, you know, give their best start, you know, the, the, the rest of the staff, you know, the rest of the starting pitchers, we were going to pick them up, right? Um, you know, no matter how, you know, no matter how the rotation was, no matter who was thrown on what day, you know, everybody backed each other, everybody supported each other, and everybody kind of knew that um, that was going to be the guy that we wanted out there. Right. Um, and we really did have, you know, an incredible level of confidence and trust in one another to know that whoever had the ball was going to go out there and give it their all and, and give us a really, really good chance to win. So, um, yeah, I mean, I can't speak enough on those guys. Just really two great leaders, um, two prominent figures, you know, in the Michigan baseball program. Uh, and, and guys who I've really looked up to and really, you know, try to follow in their footsteps, if you will. Absolutely. You mentioned confidence. You mentioned trust. Having mental, you know, having mental toughness in the game of baseball and all of sports, but in the game of baseball in particular is obviously tremendously, you know, important to one's career. And I'm sure it was for yours in particular as well. Talk to me a little bit about your mental approach. Say you have a bad, bad outing. What are you doing after the game to, you know, get that off your mind? Are you doing anything particular? Have you always been a guy who kind of just, you know, tries to push it behind you directly after something happens? Because I think that's a key piece, you know, for playing baseball. I can't, I can't speak from some experience, not, you know, the Michigan level, not, you know, the MILB, MLB level, but making an error in the middle infield, if you're thinking about that on the next play, it's going to come up and, you know, bite you in the butt. So talk to me a little bit about that and, you know, the importance behind that for you, at least in your career, uh, speaking from, you know, personal experience. No doubt. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think every baseball player at some point in their career has been told they have to have a short memory. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think growing up my entire life, it was, you know, something my dad had kind of harped into me. Somebody, you know, a lot of coaches, a lot of different people had always told me, you know, you got to have a short memory. Right. Um, but what does that really mean, right? You know, just, if, if you want to forget about it, you can try. Yeah. Uh, you got to forget about that bad outing or that pitch. Or, it's still you know, hard, though. How do you do it, right? Yeah. I mean, the thing for me, I think, that, that really helped with my growth um, was, you know, obviously when I got to Michigan, uh, Coach Backage, our head coach, and then our pitching coach, Chris Fetter, um, yep. really, really, really taught the mental game of baseball. And those are two dudes who know the mental side of things. Yeah. Um, you know, to talk a little bit about Coach Backage's approach, we had kind of like a seven-step process that he wanted us to do in between each pitch. Um, and it's quick, you know, it's it's a deep breath, it's a visualization, it's a flushing, you know, that pitch before. Um, just kind of some mental cues that we went through each and every pitch to realize that, you know, which pitch is the most important pitch in baseball. Right. You know, the next one, right? The one that you're about to throw when you got the ball in your hand. So. You know, Coach Backage instilled that, you know, from the, the minute we walked on campus. Um, and, and we kind of all had that routine and that own process for ourselves to be able to, um, you know, really lock it in when we're out there on the field. Um, to kind of speak to some of the things that Coach Fetter really helped, you know, me and some other pitchers on. Um, he was really big into meditation. 
So every day when we would go into the field, uh, let's say, you know, we had like a four o'clock practice or three o'clock practice, the pitchers would meet after we did our early work, you know, let's say you know, 15, 20 minutes before um, practice would start or our game would start and we would go through a meditation session, um, <clears throat> go into our, our team classroom, shut the lights off, kick the shoes off, take our deep breaths, go through a guided meditation session to really kind of clear our minds and center ourselves for that day of training. Because ultimately as a student athlete, you know, you got schoolwork, you got social life, you got a million things that are going on in your head every day. And it's very easy for us to take that out onto the field and not be focused, uh, you know, going into a training session and going into a game. So I think the meditation portion of things was really, really helpful for myself. Um, you know, just to kind of have that 10, 15 minutes of just clarity and focus and really just, you know, lock in what I'm trying to accomplish that day and what the goals are for that day and how I'm going to mentally prepare myself to start, you know, training for that day. So that, you know, kind of quick little, little synopsis, you know, we went through so much mental training at Michigan, but um, those were two big things that, that really seemed to help me. Again, just kind of having that process each time I'm out there on the mound, you know, my focal points, my breaths, um, as well as being able to, you know, do those guided meditations every day, just, you know, really seemed to kind of help, help me lock things in, you know, when I was in college. Did, did you notice an immediate impact and benefit from med, meditating on a day-to-day -day basis with the coach? I did, yeah, and, and he, he was right there doing it alongside us. You know, he we would play it up over, you know, like a speaker or whatever, and he was doing the same thing with us. And, you know, I can't say the first day, you know, I, I was like dialed in or, or right. anything like that. It's kind of a process, right? Uh -huh. um, so you gotta, you gotta really buy into it. I, I think probably, if I'm being honest with myself, the first couple of times I was like, yeah. hey, yeah. what am I doing this for? Right. I need to meditate. But the more serious you take it and the more you kind of open your mind up to it and, and the more you really buy into the process, um, you know, I think it's huge. I think it's huge just for your whole, your daily life, not just, you know, performing on the field. Absolutely. Um, that was one thing that, that Coach Federer always tried to stress. You know, we did things and, and did med meditation before training and, and before, you know, games and stuff. But this is something that you can take into you know, your daily life. Um, you know, if it's something you want to do when you wake up this, you know, in the morning before you go to bed, you know, it, it's not just something that, you know, we used at baseball and it's something that you can take on your daily life. So um, for me, like I said, it, it was just kind of a process. And the more I did it and the more I bought into it and the more I really focused on my meditation sessions, um, you know, the more beneficial it was for me. And, and again, I think it's, I think it's crucial. Now you mentioned the Michigan Wolverines baseball squad was, you know, really big into the mental side of things at least you know the coaches kind of harped on that and emphasized that throughout your guys' career would you say going into Michigan maybe you weren't as big into the mental side of things not only on the field but off the field as well and then coming out of Michigan you kind of realize the importance of it yeah I mean definitely I think uh you know coming out of high school not that I you know didn't feel that it was important again I just didn't really know right yeah. know how kind of you go back to like i said you know have a short memory or forget about it or you know you gotta be tougher mentally when you hear those things um you know you think maybe in your mind oh yeah you know i'll just forget about it or, or this you know you just have to really learn that process and what that process is like for yourself mm -hmm. um so for me you know, i i think i was bought into it and, and i was interested and, and ready to learn about the mental game um, but it really took getting to Michigan to get that everyday focus on it and to get the actual tools that I needed um, to, you know, apply that to my game and apply that to my life. Okay. What would you say has been your biggest life lesson, you know, taken away out of the game of baseball? Because you can, I'm talking to, talking about this to a few uh, different guys as well, but what would you say has been the biggest life lesson you've actually been able to take away from the game of baseball and actually imply it and apply it to your real life? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a ton of life lessons that you can learn from baseball. Um, I mean, one for me, I, I always try to say, you know, don't take the game too seriously. And I think that applies to life as well. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one thing I try to take. You know, don't take life too seriously, right? Uh, baseball is just a game. And I know, you know, life's not always a game. But uh, the more you can kind of take that, you know, happy-go-lucky, if you will, or that kind and relax, just, just go out there and have fun. Just go out and do the best you can. Of course, we want to compete and we want to be the best that we can be. Um, but, you know, life goes on and, and baseball goes on. 
most of the time. And, um, you know, when you can just kind of take that mentality of, hey, there's going to be another pitch, there's going to be another, you know, play, you know, have fun with it, right? Don't don't take everything so seriously that it's like, you know, you're just so wound up and so tight, you know, every time you're out there on the field. You know, have fun with it. Yeah. It's kidding. Um, you know, we're all out there just playing like, like we're 12 years old. So I try to take that, you know, kind of philosophy and stuff into my life as well. You know, have fun with life. Uh, you know, the more the more stress you put on yourself and the more seriously you take things, I think it just makes it a little bit tougher on you. So, um, you know, not sure if that's that's a, a blanket life, life lesson, but for me, you know, I, I try to just take that kind of mentality on and off the field. I love it. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about your family and your dad in particular because he actually played, you know, for the Oakland Athletics and that's who you got drafted by as well. So how special was that moment when you initially realized that you were going to get drafted by the team that your dad had played for in the past it was it was an incredible experience i mean and it was an incredible moment for for me and my family um something that almost didn't really hit me right away yeah. uh, i grow up and i see his old jerseys in the basement and, and the cleats and the this and the that with the a's logo on it and um you know growing up for me it was like wow how cool would that be you know if i could ever throw on an open a's jersey and you know you get picked by him and there's, you know, all this, you know, flood of emotions. And, you know, I kind of look at my dad and it's like, wait, you know, <laughs> I'm not going now, just like you. So it, it is, it was a pretty crazy thing uh, to experience and, and a really, really special moment for me and my family. Um, you know, I know it meant a lot to my mom as well. Um, so just a really, really cool thing to be a part of. You know, I, I know we're not the first two, but there, you know, it's not something that you come across every day. So it's, it's definitely been a cool, you know, bond that we've been able to share. Um, and, it, and it's fun, you know, he can kind of compare what the organization was like what, 35 years ago uh, to what it's like now. And it was pretty cool. I, I showed up to Instructional League this past fall and, uh, you know, a guy approached me. He was like, hey, you know, you're Chris Wall. I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, yeah, I remember your dad. So, you know, he's <laughs> and he's from the organization um, and, you know, he, he had been around when my dad was playing. So pretty, pretty cool to be able to be a part of the same organization. Um, and again, something I'm just kind of forever grateful for. Yeah, it's awesome. Congrats on that. It's not, you know, something that happens too often, like you mentioned. And what had, what advice has he given you, you know, being drafted by the Oakland Athletics, the exact same organization he played for? What is What advice has he given to you in regards to, you know, initially getting your feet wet with professional baseball in the MLB? Yeah, I mean, I think he's done a, a great job of just preparing me, um, you know, since I've wanted to take that step into professional baseball, you know, when I kind of made that decision, like, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. Right. You know, he's always been there kind of in my back pocket, um, you know, just giving me little bits of information, what it's like, kind of the grind of the minor leagues, you know, yeah. what we were gonna, oh, how easy it is to just kind of be picked up and dropped off somewhere else. Um, and, and again, just kind of the mental side of things, you know, he's been he's been great at just kind of preparing me for what professional baseball is going to be like. Uh, you know, I still haven't played a full season or anything like that, but um, there's definitely just so many conversations that we can have about players, about, you know, the way the minor league system works, the way, you know, athletics work. There's just a lot of, um, you know, similarities and a lot of stuff that he knows. So I think... Like I said, for a long time, you know, he's just been really good and, and, and a really big part of kind of prepping me, you know, to enter into this next phase. Absolutely. And one of the last topics I want to talk to you a little bit about, Jeff, is, you know, the competitive competitiveness at Michigan. What was the competitive nature like? Because I've had the capability to talk to Harry Ray over at Vanderbilt, Austin Martin. They all, you know, harp on how competitive it is. And they actually trash talk other teams and, you know, throw in examples of, you know, facing an oppo opposing pitcher. Uh, maybe that Louisville pitcher that was talking crap to the Vanderbilt team, they might have, you know, dreamed of him pitching and, you know, put that into perspective as far as the competitive nature goes. What was the competitiveness like, you know, inside the Michigan, not only locker room, but on the field as well during practice? Yeah, it's an incredibly competitive environment. Um, so, you know, to your point with Vanderbilt here, like Coach Backage actually coached under uh, Corbin, you know, when he was coming up in the coaching world. So a lot of kind of the same philosophies, uh, you know, that Corbin instills in the Vanderbilt community, we, we kind of see the same thing at Michigan. Right. Um, so it's incredibly competitive. And one thing you have to understand is it's competitive all the time. So, you know, you can't always compete in baseball, right? You can't 
always you know have a scrimmage. You can't always be pitching. You can't always be you know playing in a game or a scrimmage. So for Coach Package, what he did with us is just competing everywhere. Do you know during anything? Uh, we'd go. We'd have like a field goal kicking competition, or we'd play you know flag football, or what else did we do? I mean, we did a whole bunch of crazy stuff. We would do like one-on-one um, -on -one, like competitive challenges where you'd have, you have to like do a plank on your elbows and just beat the guy across from you or um we did like these grip challenges where you'd have to like one guy holds on to one part of the ball another guy holds on to the other part of the baseball and you try to rip it out of each other's hands i mean the stuff that coach package would come up you know with for us was crazy um but we were competing all the time no matter what it was on the field off the field he was trying to get us to compete our hardest all the time so that when we got out there on the field, we had no other choice. That was all that we were used to was just sticking our nose in there. Right. Um, so it's it's definitely, I think, one of the most important things, um, you know, for athletes, you got to be able to learn to compete all the time. You know, the minute that you take, you know, a rep off or a second off, somebody else is going to come get you. So, um you know, it was it was very prevalent to answer your question, uh, yeah. and something that we uh, definitely focus on every single day. And not only does that build your personal toughness, but it also you know builds your you, you and your teammates bond even more. And you know, in a game, you're gonna have a lot more confidence and trust because you're gonna understand you know some of these players a lot more. And before we get into the interview nomination to wrap it up, Jeff, I want to talk to you a little bit about Feel Factory with Coach Zinger and how beneficial that's been for you. Uh, during the off season thus far and you know facing guys like Nolan Gorman and you know Harrison Bader and then learning from guys as well like Tyler Glass now Tarek Skubal um, as well as Jamison Talion how beneficial has that been for you? Yeah it's been awesome I mean uh, Coach Singer I, I got the recommendation from Edwin Jackson okay. uh, we moved down here just a few weeks ago and we you know we're kind of trying to figure out where we're going to throw our pens and stuff and um, he recommended Fuel Factory and and the the first time I went in there, I was like, yeah, like this is this is where I'm going to go after. This is where I'm going to throw my pens. And Coach Zinger has been awesome. I mean, he's, um, unfortunately, he's a Michigan State Sparty. <laughs> he's, he's welcomed us Michigan guys with open arms and, you know, really been great, you know, as kind of this lead up into spring training, um, being able to get us video, rap soda data, um, as well as, like you mentioned, being able to learn from guys like Scooble and, and watch those guys throw. I mean, it's been incredibly beneficial, um, and, and I'll definitely be returning to, to Fuel Factory in the off season because it's it's just a great place to train. It's a great environment, um, great people, and, and and I couldn't have been happier that I, I you know found them and, and was able to uh, throw there for the past couple of weeks. Yeah, there's even some competitiveness and trash talk in in that facility as well, which is important in the off season as well because you got to have continuous competitiveness and trash talk throughout the year, not just during the season. Have you and Coach Zinger trash talked a little bit about, you know, Michigan State and then the University of Michigan? <laughs> Not too much. I, you know, I haven't really gotten that him yet. I, I probably should have, though. <laughs> I probably was definitely present. You know, that was kind of one of the first things I noticed when I walked in there. <laughs> it's a Sparty flag, right? And, you, know, we did you could tell right away. Right, right. But, um, you know, that's one thing about the baseball community, man. Everybody just kind of comes together no matter where you're from. Right. Uh, Rivals can, you know, it, everybody's just, you know, so so open and so welcoming there in the baseball community. It's just been awesome. So, yeah, most definitely, Jeff. Well, to wrap it up, like I do uh, for most of my interviews, I ask my interviewee to nominate someone else to do an interview with me. Like I told you off camera, but Jeff, who will be that guy? So I will nominate Jack Weisenberger. Okay. Um, also, Oakland Athletic, and he played on that 2019 Michigan team as well. So, awesome. um, looked at him and I thought, you know, he could kind of give you a different perspective as well. You know, I know it's another Michigan guy, but, um, you know, he's a great guy and he should give you a good interview. So, love it. Well, Jack, I look forward to hopefully speaking to you soon. I'm getting your perspective on the 2019, uh, 2019 team and, you know, talk about the importance of Jeff Criswell during that season. But, Jeff, I really appreciate you hopping on. You know, best of luck in the future. Um, and now your professional career and we'll for sure stay in touch. Yeah, man, I, I really appreciate you having me on. It's been a lot of fun today. So, um, yeah, look forward to talking to you soon.